Uh, this is part two of uh, lecture seven about narrowband modems, which can be considered as an introduction to modem design technologies. In the first part, I talked about binary modulation techniques. In particular, I compared coherent and non-coherent detection of FSK and PSK signals. In this second part, we are going to talk about multi-symbol communication techniques. What is the meaning of multi-symbol? Basically, in binary communication, I had two symbols. One symbol was zero, one symbol was one. And each symbol in communication is like a waveform that I send. Now, if I, rather than two waveforms to send, if I have four waveforms, each of these waveforms are going to be represented with two bits. So it's not binary communication anymore. Okay? So, then, so that's the basic thing. So if I have multi-level communication, that's the time that I have symbols which are like more than binary, more than two symbols. Now how do I generate these more than two symbols? Let me start with the first one. We call it multi-level pulse amplitude modulation. In multi-level pulse amplitude modulation, what I do is that rather than, like you remember in binary PSK, I had like two amplitude, one and minus one, for example, for a cosine that I was sending. In here, rather than having two amplitude, one and minus one, I take four amplitude. One minus one, plus three minus three. Basically, it's the same as like binary PSK that I had, but in binary PSK, the output of this match filter was AI square root of ES plus epsilon, this AI was only plus minus one. Now I will have plus minus one, plus minus three, etc. But since number of symbols that I'm going to select is for digital communication, I have either two bits, so I have like four symbols, or I have three bits, I have like eight symbols. So I take like this thing, uh, the, I can have different designs for that too, but I mean, not in this course. I mean, in other courses, sometimes we talk about it. But basically, in here, what I have is I have like this A sub i equals to plus minus 1, plus minus 3, etc., etc., plus minus 5, plus minus 7. And then I have M, which is number of symbols, a small m number of bits. Okay, so the bits which are coming in, I will categorize them, I combine them together, make packets. And for each packet, I have a symbol. Now, to represent that now in signal constellation form, this is, for example, the so-called four PAM, four pulse, pulse amplitude modulation. This is plus minus one, which is associated to that ES that I had earlier. This is plus minus three. Okay? So the data is coming in. The, the data stream is coming in like zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, whatever. This is the data stream. I take them two by two. The first two are zero, one. I send this symbol. The second two is one, zero. I send this symbol. The next one is one, one. I send this symbol and etc. Okay? So, I think this four level is a good example. So, I send these symbols. Now, what do I receive if I have four level? At the receiver, I receive like one, two. This is what I send. Transmitter. Okay. These are plus one, minus one, plus three, minus three. Times what? Times a square root of this E that I had. ES, I called it. Energy per symbol that I called it. ES1, I called it, I believe. This is a square root of ES1, a square root of ES1, a square root of ES1. Okay? But at the receiver, I don't receive these things. I receive them plus that little epsilon, which is the noise. So I receive something like that. How do I differentiate them from one another? I have to define decision line. Where are the natural decision line in between these? These are my decision lines. So if I receive a number at the receiver, it's between these two, it is this symbol, which was associated to like 
0 1 if it was this symbol associated to 1 1 is 1 0 this is like 0 0 huh? this is how I detect that the receiver make sense now <clears throat> what I want to do in here is now to do a little bit of like similar things that I did last time I want to calculate like probability of error average symbol things like that huh? in order to do that let's first come for uh, energy per symbol if I call these ESS I call them I mean E or ES whichever I want to call it okay that's for one symbol now what is the average energy in here per symbol average energy per symbol if I call it EH ES average for example equal to energy in the symbol 1 first symbol is this guy huh? which is what ES a square of this thing a square of this distance what is the average energy of this one is a square of this which is 9 ES one if I want to call it I mean in this I, I use different notations everywhere is always my problem plus then energy of this one which is ES1 plus energy of this one which is 9 ES1 so it is energy average energy per symbol is equal to how much is equal to uh, 10 10 20 ES1 okay over what over 4 because I had four symbols make sense so it's equal to five times ES1 now how much how many bits do I send per symbol two bits so each energy per symbol is also two energy per bit huh so my energy per bit equals to what 5 over 2 energy ES1 or whatever you want to call it this is one relationship that I used to find for probability of error stuff the other one that I was keen on was what? D how much was D? D in here was the distance between two symbols which is equal to what? 2 times a square root of ES1 is that right? D is the distance between minimum distance between the symbols is 2 times ES average energy per bit is so much ok so I can just combine these two to get rid of ES and I will find rather than ES in here I can put what rather than ES1 I can put uh, d square over 4 is that right so rather than es1 I put d square over 4 so eb equals to 5 over 2 times d square over 4 which is 4 over 8 d square huh? and check my calculations because I make a lot of errors in this little calculation okay but the concept is that why, why am I interested in D now why am I interested in D D equals to 8 over 5 times a square root of uh, sorry a square root of uh, D equals to a square root of 8 over 5 times EB is that correct if I have not made any algebraic error I have find a D in terms of what? EB. Now, can you tell me what is the error rate? Error rate is always 0.5 earth complement of what? Of D mean, on, which is the D mean that I calculated in there, over 2 square root of N0. So, it's equal to 1 half earth complement of rather than d I put a square root of 5 over this which would be a square root of like I believe 2 over 5 
EB over N0, which is the same as gamma. So it's equal to 1 half F complement of a square root of 2 over 5 gamma. So I can calculate the error rate. Listen, I'm not even remembering what was like match filter. I'm not remembering anything. I'm only using the signal constellation, minimum distance and average to calculate the error rate and I can do it. And to tell you the truth, this one half F complement is redundant. I mean, why do I want to use it over and over again? Because I want to compare these, these things under here. Signal to noise ratio requirements. Huh? In here, I have something like two fifth of gamma. Okay? Gamma B, if you want to call it. And for like binary, I had like for binary, I had gamma sub B. Do you remember? For binary PSK, it was F complement S square root of gamma sub B. In here is F complement that S square root of two fifth of that. So there is a two-fifth difference between this. Huh? So if I get two-fifth is like, I'm inverse of that is 2.5. A little bit more than 3 dB, I need more power to make the error rate of this thing the same as error rate of binary. Okay? So if I want to have the same error rate for this four point, I need to have 10 log 10 of 2.5 more power which really what will happen is that if I want them to have the same error rate they have to have the same distances huh? if they have the same distances and I have like four points I have to send more power okay that's the meaning and this is how I calculate those powers isn't that neat so I now can, I can compare things so what am I doing? I'm compromising. I went from one bit per symbol to two bit per symbol, but what do I pay? I pay like more than 3 dB. Huh? Around 3 dB. I call it 3 dB per bit. Or, no, actually it's more than that. I mean, log of that will be close to like, I, I think log of 2.5. That would be more than that, much more than that. Okay. So, here I am. So, in order to calculate my stuff, really, truly, uh, and compare this multi-level. Multi-level means what? means that I'm sending more symbols. What do I lose? I have to add more power. Huh? And I want to make a comparison between them. Now, how do I make those comparisons? I compare them when the Ds are the same. Huh? That, that's, and then I don't need to think about anything else really so signal constellation is my source for comparison of modulation techniques hmm? so if I'm sitting in a standardization activities I don't talk about those details anymore I give you the signal constellations and based on that we do our negotiation about which is better which is worse okay so now we come in here I showed you the example so I get keen now I get keen to what I get keen to this thing that uh, I have like four and then I have five uh, sorry uh, I have uh, four M a small M oh, 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 oh. I did the same thing I did last time I used the wrong marker but anyways we will fix it later on uh, I have like a small M number of bits equal to one that was binary PSK huh? For a small m equal to 2, it was 4 pam, if you want to call it. Huh? Which is 4 symbols. m was 2 bits per symbol. If I go m equal to 3, I have 8 pam, multiple symbols. This way I can increase my data rate with the same bandwidth. I have the same fixed bandwidth. I'm increasing what? Increasing the data rate. Okay, but what is the pay is power. So the channel like this, I call it band limited channel. 
means that I have restriction of the bandwidth. I have no restriction on power. Huh? And then I'm looking at the comparison. For the comparison, if I take these things, if I do the calculations from the equations, d square is something like this in this equation. If I solve this thing, I can write it in the recursive format like this. ES, which is average energy per symbol, not the per bit. Average energy per symbol to the power of m plus 1 is 4 times ES m plus 1 third of d square. What is the meaning of that? means that if I add the number of bits from 3 to 4, okay, and I have the ES for 4, I put it in here, and this is my new equation. Now, if you look at this recursive equation, any time that I increase the m one time, I increase the previous time. I mean, I have to multiply the old one to what? 4. So, in this recursive equation, what I'm telling you is that my average energy per symbol, as I go for 3 to 4 bits, will increase four times. Four times means how many dB? Four times is six dB. So in PAM, pulse amplitude modulation techniques, I have six dB per bit. Huh? This is the meaning of that. If you want to apply that, let me just come in here. Let me assume that, like, I have like a like a uh, basic bandwidth or pulse shape of like the basic data rate of like one megabit per second, for example. Ah, something just just as an example. I have one megabit per second for binary PSK. Okay. Now, if I go for like for like 4 PAM, this is going to be what? 2 megabit per second. If I go for 8 PAM, it would be how much? Would be now, this is 3 bits, 8 is 3 bits, this is 2 bits, so 3 bits per symbol, so it would be how much? 3 megabit per second. Huh? If I go to 16 PAM, which is 4 bits per symbol, I will have like 4 megabit per second. Is that right? Is that right? So my basic data rate is 1 megabit per second. Means that I'm sending my symbols at the rate of 1 mega symbols per second. If each symbol carries 4 bit, I have 4 megabit per second. Is that right? Because my symbol rate is always fixed. So this way I can increase my data rate. If I go to like 64 PAM, 64 PAM is how many bits? It's 6 bits. So my data rate will be what? 6 megabit per second. So I'm increasing my data rate 6 times. Okay? This is the technique that generally they use in what? Wireless LANs to increase the data rate. But what is the penalty that I pay? Penalty is power. Every bit in here, I showed you adds how much? Every bit was how much? Was 6 dB. Okay? So I have added like 1 bit, 2 bit, 3 bit? Uh, no, no. I have added 5 bits. Huh? So 5, I need 30 more dB to go to 64 PAM. I need 30 more dBs. Okay, if the distance power gradient is like 10, for example, that means, uh, sorry, distance power gradient is like 3, that's one order of magnitude of distance. So if I come from 10 meter to 1 meter, for example, the signal-to-noise ratio goes up like 30 dB, if my alpha is equal to 3, 
Okay? And then I can go rather than binary PSK to what? To 64 pound. Did you follow that? In radio communication, what is going on is that as I get closer to the transmitter, my signal to noise ratio goes higher. And that goes according to what? Distance power gradient. Huh? So, in a sense, when I get close, I go to more symbols in per second, and I send higher data rate. And when I go further, my signal to noise ratio drops, I go to lower data rate. The trick in every mobile data service, wireless LANs, or GPRS, or Edge, or HDR, all of them are using this trick to change, to adjust their data rate. Okay? Now, okay, very nice, but the thing that I want to carry from here is that I started my multi level communication techniques with pulse amplitude modulation which is not the most popular really and what I told you was that if you want to remember that as a lazy system engineer you remember it like in PAM every bit is 6 dB and then I want to continue my life to go to other modulation techniques and see what I can do. But meanwhile, in here I told you how to calculate the probability of error for that. Now I feel I'm very comfortable with modulation techniques. Huh? Now let's go to the next one. Next one, which is the more popular and more useful, is quadrature amplitude modulation. Quadrature amplitude modulation was first implemented in 1970 for uh, voice band modems patented by Dave Forney and Bob Gallagher at Codex in Mansfield, Massachusetts. And that was the base for first 9600 bit per second modems. And at that time it was very a big revolution at the time of itself. Okay. But later on it was around and it was not used in the radio system because when you go for, in radio, people were interested in cellular, and for cellular, uh, you cannot go multi-level, because radio fluctuations is so much that uh, multi-level is very difficult to be implemented in long distances. Okay? First time that people started to use that, and also for the voice, you don't need variable rate. You need fixed rate for the voice. Okay. But when they started to go for data, you can have variable data rates. They went for wireless lands, mobile data network. They started to bring this concept from voice band modems and apply it to what? To radio. With the concept that I told you earlier. But when, when, what is QAM? QAM basically is a 2D pump. What is 2D? What is the meaning of two dimension? And I can create the two dimension if I have wires, two sets of wires. This is two dimensional. Two dimensional means that I have two independent medium. That's like with two wires. If you give me two radios, that's two. Or I can set my bits. I mean, one set independent from the second set and call it 2D. But the most popular and easiest way and more practical is the so-called quadrature amplitude modulation. In quadrature amplitude modulation, what they do is that in binary PSK, you will remember, I had like one cosine, and I was modulating over cosine. So I can equivalently modulate another thing on a sine. Because sine and cosine are orthogonal, at the receiver I can differentiate them. Very similar to FSK. Huh? But in FSK, I'm using two different frequencies. I occupy more bandwidth. In here, I use sine and cosine, which have the same frequency. So I'm within the same bandwidth, I'm doubling my data rate. Do you follow? So I'm creating 
four wires over the same band. This is the beauty of what QAM. So basically, I transmit the signal multiplied with the cosine and sine. At the receiver, I multiplied with cosine and sine. I pass through match filters and I sample them. The received signal really in here is two branches, this one and this one. It's like a complex number. It's two-dimensional. The real part is AI. The imaginary part is BI. And each of AI and BI could be a pulse amplitude modulation. So I have like a two-dimensional thing in there. Every, every time that I receive signal, I have an X for that and I have a Y for that. So how do I transmit? Well, let's get some example. The simple example of two-dimensional modulation is the so-called QPSK. QPSK is equivalent to two times binary PSK, huh? So I send like I take four symbols. I can take them. I mean, in binary modulation, I had these two. Do you remember? This was a square root of E S, and this was minus a square root of E S. In here, this is on the cosine, and then on sine, I put two more. In here, a square root of E S minus a square root of E S. Huh? And in practice, there are two rails. Rails of the receiver, cosine rail, sine rail. But again, I want to stay with signal constellation. I mean, you know that how to implement two dimensional. You do it with the cosine and sine. Okay, but let's just get to this and see that how does it operate. The data is coming 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, whatever. I group them two by two. I want to map it to here. I have four points. I put this one 0, 0. This one, 1, 0, for example. This one, uh, 0, 1. And this one, 1, 1, for example. Huh? If it is like 0, 0, I send a square root of ES in one line and 0 on the other line. One on the sine and the, the other one on cosine. OK? And if it is like this, like if it is 0, 1, I send like one on the sine, a square root of es on the sine, and I send minus uh, a zero on the cosine sine. So I have always associated to any of these double digits. I will have like x and y, which are two amplitudes that I send over the cosine, or I send it over the sine. Okay. What is the difference between this one and BPSK? It has double of the data rate. Now I have two bits per symbol. How about probability of error? Probability of error of this thing is exactly the same as probability of error of what? Of the binary PSK. In a sense. Because I have cosine and sine, just independent from one another, they are running. Okay. Now, uh, so let's try to just calculate the probability of error, for example, for this based on the signal constellation. Based on signal constellation, well, I have to make now like uh, minimum distance or energy per bit. Let's, let's just, what is the minimum distance? This is the minimum distance. Huh? This is Demian. OK. Now, what is Demian equal to? The minimum distance is equal to, this is ES, this is ES, this is 2 a square root of ES. ES1, I call it. Is it? Or? Now, a square root of, sorry, a square root of 2 ES. Is that right? This is like a triangle. Each side is a square root of ES, so this is a right triangle. So this one is what? This is a square root of 2 times ES. Is that right? 
So this is my distance. What is energy ES average? ES average is that this is energy in this one is how much? ES. Energy in here is what? ES. Energy in here is what? ES. Energy in here is ES. ES1 in, in, in a sense. So I have ES1 plus ES1 plus ES1 plus ES1 divided by 4, which is really ES1. So what is the relationship between D and ES1? Relationship between D and ES1 is D equals to 2 times ES or ES1, both of them, ES average. Now, average energy per symbol is ES, which is the same as this value ES1, if you want to call it. And then, uh, what is the energy per bit? With each symbol, I'm sending what? Two bits. So this is 2 times EB. Is that right? So in another word, if I want to put this thing in terms of EB, I'm going to have D equals to a square root of, rather than ES, I put that. So 4 times EB. EB average or EB, if you want to call it, energy per bit. Hmm? Please check my calculations. Hmm? If I'm not making an error, then my probability of error is what? 0.5 or 1 half F complement of D over 2. D over 2 is D is a square root of 4 EB over 2 times a square root of N0. This is equal to this 2 and this 4, they cancel. So it's a square root of EB over N0, which is what? Uh, yeah, F complement, I missed it in here. So it is equal to 1 half F complement of a square root of gamma B, which was the same as what? Error rate of binary PSK. I intuitively makes sense. Huh? What was binary PSK after all? Binary PSK was like the same as this one. Just I'm sending them in two, two different rails. There's no reason that they make more errors. Okay. The last question, where are the decision lines in here? Comes in the middle in here. This is one decision line, one decision line. These are my what? decision lines so I, now I have an understanding I didn't need again to go to earth complement stuff I could just stay in here hmm, and say that D equals to really 2 square root of EB or ES if you want to call it well EB actually energy per bit and then I could compare it with the same stuff with what? I had the same distance for the binary PSK, if you remember. In binary PSK, D was 2 times a square root of EB. But I can put the earth complement in there. But I'm gradually phasing out earth complement from my discussions. Good. So I like QAM. Now, the next question in here is that, okay, this is QAM. Again, if I have QAM, I'm going to have like things of this nature. Uh, for I have a parameter in here, still this parameter M. What is M? number of bits per what? per symbol is that right? now this is like QAM I mean uh, I have like either M equal to 1 which is QPSK okay and then I go for M equal to 
uh, uh, two, I end up with, see, the point is that I have two two dimensionals. So, first one is like this thing, like four of them. I can put the four in here, like that. Then the next one is, this one. If I want to go for this, this is m equal to 3. This is m equal to 2. Now, uh, sorry, this is m equal to 4. This is m equal to 2. If I go with boxes. If I want to have something between them, then I have like something like this. Four of them. Then I need for m equal to 3. I need eight symbols. How do I want to do the eight symbols? I have to come up with something a little bit different now for eight symbols. I can put something like this, 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 this. How many do I have now? For example, now I have four, four, eight. Oh, no. That was the four. Or I can put the other four in here, for example. Sorry. These are the four. Four that I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I cannot have that rectangular thing in there. Then I go for m equal to six. For m equal to six, I will have something like uh, 64 points in the constellation. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 16, and repeated in here. This is called 64 QAM. Okay. So if you go for m equal to two, four, six, then eight, always you have this rectangular. If you go things in between them, like m equal to five, for example, which is thirty-two points, it doesn't end up to be rectangular. For thirty, for thirty-two, for example, for m equal to five, it would be something like this, a cross shape. This would be 32. See, these are both rectangular. And then, etc. Et so it goes between the cross and rectangular. You go back and forth. Okay? But if you go m equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, you have rectangular things for QAM. Now, the question in here comes that, now, if I calculate now, again, average energy per symbol for these guys, how does it relate to D? Huh? If you do that, if you do the calculation, this is the relationship between D and ES for a given M. Okay? This is DS squared equals to 6 over 2 to the power of M minus 1 times ESM. Times ESM. Okay? You can calculate that. I mean, you can do it as an exercise at home. Okay. Now, if you write this thing in recursive format, then you will have something like this. In recursive format. ESM plus 1 equals to 2 ESM plus D squared over 6. Huh? But I'm doing all of these stories because I want to get some conclusions that what will happen if I add one bit to my constellation. If I look at this recursive equation, I see it in here. Huh? If I go from m to m plus 1, I have to double in the recursive form. 2 times means what? Means 3 dB. So for quam, I have 3 dB per bit. Isn't that right? That's very exciting. You remember what did I have for PAM? For PAM, I had 6 dB per bit. 
How do I manage that? Because this is two dimensional. Okay? So every three bit, I can send one additional bit. And if I was one megabit per second, for three dB, I add one megabit to my data rate. Hmm? I'm talking about band limited channel. So now I can go and I do some stuff, some example for that, sweet examples which are related to practical things. Uh, let me just go for an example. In 802.11, 802.11, uh, uh, A and G, which they are using OFDM modulation. They use like variety of modulation from BPSK, QPSK, up to 64 QAM. Okay. If you take this QPSK, for example, QPSK is M equal to what? M equals to 2. 64 QAM, M equals to what? Equals to 6. Do you follow me? So, what is the difference? Difference is four more bits. Four more bits is equivalent to what? Each bit is 3 dB. Is what? 12 dB. 12 dB more to go from 16 QAM to what? To 64 QAM. The... Uh, with that data rate, I mean, with this 64, they have like 54 megabit per second. In here, they have something like one third of that, which is 18 megabit per second. Okay? So, it means that when I'm close to the transmitter, I send 64 QAM at 54 megabit per second. As I go away, at some time, 64 QAM is making, signal to noise ratio is low. It makes like what? Makes error rates that are not acceptable for me. So my header of the packet get lost. I reduce to lower rate. I mean, in between, they have 16 QAM also. They have other modulations in between. Okay? When I arrive, but uh, when I'm in here, in like I have 64, then I go another 12 dB lower in power, then I go to 18 megabit per second, uh, which is like a QAM, QPSK. In here, I was like 54 megabit per second, and in here... I will be something like 18 megabit per second. And from there I can go lower to what binary PSK actually, up to binary PSK. And in between they change the coding also. So, I mean, another thing on top of this thing is that what type of coding you add to the data. You can change that coding and change it as well. So anyways, that's how it works. So basically what I told you in here was that if you go, I taught you two things. I taught you how to calculate the, uh, the error rate and also how to relate that to the distance uh, and average energy per bit in the signal constellation. So anybody which gives you a signal constellation, you can calculate the average energy of all the points in the constellation related to the distance, minimum distance, between the two symbols. Okay? And when you relate those things together, then you can compare them. You can compare that relationships and say that who needs how much more power to run with the same data rate. With same error rate, sorry. Hmm? And in there you can calculate the additional power requirement. And 
if you want to know what is the resulting data rate improvement, you just calculate m, little m, which is 2 to the m is number of symbols. And that's how your data rate is changing. So now I go to wherever any like a standard, I show you the signal constellation, I give you the signal constellation, and you can relate these guys to what? To your product and the coverage of your product. So somebody who designs a wireless LAN gives you like different signal levels at which you're going to have different data rates. And you can confirm that or calculate it and do things like that. And you can relate the data rate to what? To the coverage which is a very important issue in wireless data communication. And everybody wants to test that. Okay, but this is the foundation for that. Okay? Now, one more thing is that, I mean, I talked about this structured QAM. Really, two-dimensional modulation can be anything. I mean, it can be like this particular thing, which we call it QAM, or I can put all the points on a circle. If I put it all over the circle, these different points in the constellation are only changing in what? In phase. So we call it MPSK. These guys we call it QAM. What is the advantage of MPSK over QAM? The amplitude of QAM is changing up and down, but amplitude of MPSK is fixed. What is the advantage of QAM over QPSK, uh, over MPSK? The advantage is that this minimum distance for the, sense, for the same number of points is larger for QAM. So QAM has a better performance. Okay, and you can calculate that easily. I mean, for QAM, this is the D. I mean, I have it. How can you calculate that for this guy? That's easy. For this guy, let me just give you an example. I can use this equation and do the calculation of error rate for MSK. So let me just come and give you this example, for example. If I want to calculate now the probability of error, let's say that I have like, like these, uh, I mean for QPSK I did it already for you. This was for QPSK. If I have four points, I put them in here on a circle. This is four PSK. Okay. I already calculated this thing for you. If this is like a square root of ES, average of ES is the same as this ES, one that I called it. And the distance in here the minimum distance, this d, was equal to what? Was a square root of 2 times ds. Do you remember? I did that calculation for you. But if you want to do like 8 psk, you put 4 more in here. This is 8 psk. Huh? This is the 8 psk. You have 8 points in the constellation. Each point is not 3 bits. Okay. So how do you calculate that? I need to calculate this. This is the minimum distance. To calculate that, I come in here, or I come in here. I want to calculate this minimum distance. Okay, what is this theta in here? This theta equals to how much? This theta equals to, I have eight, 2 pi divided by 8. 2 pi divided by 8. If I take half of that, this angle is pi divided by 8. Okay? What is this thing equal to? This is, this one is d half, okay? Which is the same as this thing. This one over this one is sine, so this would be like a square root of es times sine of this pi over 8. Did you follow me? 
So I can calculate D then. D equals to 2 square root of ES sine of pi over 8. And if I know what is D, I'm all set. Because I can put it in what? 1 half earth complement of D over 2 square root of N0 to calculate the error rate. Isn't that fun? So I can calculate the error rate of variety of signal constellation. But these are all a structured signal constellation. Let me give you another example, a tricky one. Now, let's say that let's say that I have QPSK. Another example. This is my QPSK. What is the angle in here? This is like pi over 4. And these 4 are in a circle. Now, let's say that, I mean, I'm sending these 4 in the constant, in, uh, 4 point in the constellation. At the receiver, if I have phase jitter, what will happen? These points start to shift. Shift in this circle. If I have like, like, 10 degrees, this point shifts to here. So I receive this one rather than this. If there's a phase shift between in phase and quadrature phase that I receive at the receiver, and in phase and quadrature of transmitter, I have a phase shift in here. So this is phase error. Phase error. If I have phase error, what happens? I mean, I expect that I'm making more errors. huh? How do I make those errors? Let me tell you this thing. These are my four points, original points. This, 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 this. Where are my decision lines? This is decision line number one. This is decision line number two. So these are decision lines. Decision lines. This one and this one. OK? Now, in order to find my error rate, I find the minimum distance from decision lines, which is this thing, d half, which I already calculated was a square root of es sine of pi over whatever. In this case, is different. It's sine of pi over 4, because it's 4 points. Huh? Now, if I have a phase error, everybody is getting shifted to here. OK? So now, what is my minimum distance? It's this one which is rather than, I mean, d half, or the minimum distance, rather than a square root of es sine of pi over 4 is sine of pi over 4 minus phase shift, whatever it is. Huh? It's true that my distance from this guy gets even bigger. But always the minimum distance dominates the error rate. OK? So this is how I will calculate it. Actually, you have a homework related to that. And then later on, actually, I have, like, in the new book, I have also projects to do this type of thing. This is the importance of phase shift. OK. So if I have phase error, it causes a lot of errors. OK. So if I have, like, good phase lock loops, then I can have more number of points in the constellation. Now, in radio, com the other thing which, which I'm fighting for is the amplitude. If I have, like, the same amplitude all the time, then I receive the constellation. It's easier to detect. I don't need any reference, really. OK? But if I have amplitude variations, I will have more difficulties to detect. And also, if I have amplitude variations, I'm talking about radio amplifiers. And radio amplifiers, the output power amplifiers, are not linear. They have nonlinear elements. So what will happen is that if I have a QAM, points in the corner, corner of constellation make more error than the point in the middle. OK? So in the old time and for like distances which are large, P 
people use only QPSK or things similar to QPSK. So that's what they use for the cellular, cellular binary PSK type of thing. And if they want to go to higher data rates, they use eight phase or something like that. But for wireless LANs, since the distances are small and signal to noise ratios are high, they use like QAM as well as others. So variety of modulations are applied for wireless LANs because distances are smaller. More restricted modulations are using for wide area networks. For voice oriented networks, since I want to have fixed data rate, people almost strictly either use GMSK or Piver for QPSK. Because in cellular networks, bandwidth efficiency is very important. They are interference limited channels. Wireless LANs are not interference limited in a sense. Okay? In cellular networks, they plan the cell network, very large cell, based on how much people are interfering to the neighboring cells. So it's interference limited channel. Okay? And then if you have like a particular modulation technique and it has a lot of side lobes, it creates interference to other people more. So you are very careful about that. So issues for the design of the modems for wide area networks are a little bit different from the issues for the design of the modems for local area networks. For local area networks, people are using QAMs or variety of that because the interest is in higher data rates. For large area networks, they have other consideration because that's interference limited channel. And that is the topic that I would like to discuss next. But before I go there, I have that some summaries and curves that I want to show you. This is calculation of probability of errors for MPSK, MFSK, MQAM. These are, I mean, I showed you how to calculate it, but these are like average things that are available around. These are probability of symbol error, not bit error. Okay. S over N is your signal to noise ratio. This is the relationship between signal to noise ratio and gamma S. Gamma per symbol. R S is symbol transmission rate. W is the bandwidth. N0 is the same N0 that we had before. These are some plots to compare variety of M's for variety of M's for variety of modulations. And you can get the same conclusions that I was getting before. But I like actually the one, the 3 dB stuff that I taught you earlier, based on D, that's the easiest and the best. But these are the more accurate ones. Okay. So basically people do this calculation of error rates and they sketch plots of this form. But in reality, the best way to look into like a uh, variety of multi uh, symbol modulation techniques is to go to the signal constellation and calculate the D's and compare them with one another. I mean, relationship between D and average energy per symbol can tell you how much more power you need for other things. And that's one of the better ways and very good approximation. And with that, you can analyze also the effect of phase jitter or whatever exists in there. So with this, uh, I will close this second part of the lecture, which was about uh, multi-level modulation techniques, which uh, are the bread and butter of wireless local area networks. In the third part, what I do is I will talk about GMSK and Pi over 4 QPSK modulation technique as two most popular modulation techniques which have been used for wide area networks. First I talk about the requirement for wide area networks and why it is different and they introduce those two modulation techniques.